Over the course of the last two months, really going all the way back to the beginning of February, right at the end of January, uh, when this market initially broke down, we've been talking about this continuation of this consolidation pattern that's continued almost relentlessly for the last couple of months, uh, with the market continuing to base right around the 200-day moving average. Now, while the base of support has been good, what's been declining has been the peaks of the markets down to lower and lower levels. Now, we talked about last week here on the show, we said this compression in price was going to break out in one direction or the other. And we said if we broke down out of this compression, we have a bigger correction. That's why we were holding extra cash. If we broke out of this consolidation process, we were going to put some cash to work. Well, we did break out to the upside, so we did indeed put a little bit of money to work. I said a little bit. We didn't go crazy and put all of our money in the markets, but we did take some of that cash we'd been holding. We did actually allocate it to both some equities as well as some ETFs. And importantly today, we had a little bit of a correction, not a big one, but just enough to come down and retest this uh, previous resistance at the 100-day moving average. We broke out of that resistance. We've got clear sailing to, to all-time highs here for the markets for the most part, but we came down and retested that, that previous resistance, making it support. This is actually a very good bullish development. Over the next day or so, if we don't violate this support level and are able to base here and turn up, that's actually going to be an opportunity for us to add a little bit more. Uh, exposure to the market. So we're watching this consolidation process here at the end very, very closely because this could be a, at least a short-term continuation of this market over the course of the next month. Now listen, really beyond about a month, it's hard to tell what the markets are going to do. We've got a lot of pressures that are building up geopolitically with the markets. Today, North Korea walked out of talks with South Korea. Uh, that's going to provide some angst because there was a lot of hope that we get peace out of North Korea. Uh, that really seems to be a little bit tenuous at the moment. The movement of the embassy to Jerusalem, as we were talking about in the last hour, that also provides a geopolitical spark zone for con you know, potential unrest in the Middle East. Then you have trade talks with China. Their talk came out today talking about the fact that they're still very far apart on issues regarding tariffs and, and the trade with China. And of course, we, as I was saying earlier, we are not in a 1980s style uh, economy anymore where we have six, 7% rates of economic growth. We've got low debt to income ratios. We've got savings rates of six, seven and 8%. We're no longer that environment anymore. We were primarily manufacturing based and not so much in services. Today, it's actually inverted. We're primarily 80% services, 20% manufacturing. We have very low savings rates, very high debt levels uh, at the corporate, at the individual household as well as the government corporate household, uh, government levels. Um, and you also have an environment of slow economic growth and very low savings rates. We're also worrying about tariffs at a time where only a very small portion of our country manufactures. So we're talking about putting at risk more than 2 million jobs to save 200,000 manufacturing jobs. We're in a globally flat, interconnected world where impacts of trade and tariff have a very direct impact to the producers and consumers of goods here in the U.S. So the, the bigger issue, and we've got to be so careful with these tariff issues, is they have an immediate and direct impact on consumption. Because once you, re once you apply a tax to a product, good, or service, that immediately gets passed on to consumers. If consumers are already constricted by low savings rates and high debt levels, they have a tough time absorbing those higher costs. Now, you have this issue with higher potential taxes coming in from tariffs at the same time that you have interest rates rising. We're at 3% today. That's going to impact borrowing consumption. In fact, if you take a look at loan demand, that's already begun to slow a good bit here as interest rates have gone up because people say, well, you know, last month I was able to buy a house at 4%. My payment was 1,500 bucks. This month is 4.5%. My payment's 1,600 bucks. I can't really come up with the extra $100 a month. Yes, budgets are just that tight. And in an environment where you have very tight budgetary constraints, small changes to interest rates can have a large impact to the overall strength of economic growth. That's the other conundrum here. See, we're also raising, we're raising rates in an environment where economic growth is 2%. So a lot of the analysis comes out and says, don't worry about rising interest rates. The economy can withstand rising interest rates for a long time. Historically, you can go 20, 30 months, 36 months, once you start hiking rates before the economy falls into recession. 
Well, that was when interest, well, that's when economic growth was running at 4 and 5%, not 2 so at 2% growth rates in the economy, you've got half the amount of time to go before you actually drop back into a recession. So be very careful with, with this analysis that's being thrown out there because the environment today is not the environment of the 1980s. This is not the Reagan economy. This is an entirely different economically, globally interconnected, very flat economy that is, that is directly impacted by the cost of consumers and the cost of exporters as things go out the door. So watch this very carefully. It's going to be very important what happens in China. But then we also have the Russia. We have the issues with Russia. We've got the issues with Iran. This is a world that we live in right now that going forward, we've got Federal Reserve raising interest rates, extracting monetary liquidity, the ECB as well as Japan doing the same thing. There is a real risk here to the markets over the next few months. So while this breakout is bullish, don't take your eye off the bigger ball that there is risk ahead. And if things go wrong here, we're gonna begin hedging and raising cash again. But right now, while we are bullish, we wanna take advantage of that. And I still think we can get a little bit more rally out of this market. We'll see in the next few days, but get by our website. Make sure you're subscribed to our weekly newsletter. Every Tuesday, every Saturday, we cover exactly this, what we're doing in portfolios, what we're expecting, what we're looking for.